Hi, I'm Ralph Sheffer. And I'm Mimi Sheffer. In this worship series, God is Holding Your Life, our hope is that we bring a breather and a sense of assurance to us all. We can swing between disappointment, helplessness, and gratitude on a daily basis. The Book of Psalms knows all about this, written over a span of time from exile and isolation to the rebuilding of the community. The poetry of the Psalms will accompany us in this series, reminding us that through it all, we can trust that God is indeed holding our lives. This worship series will allow us to simplify and slow down for a time. We will lean on prayer, reflection, and sharing with one another. Let us seek to simplify this moment, slow down for a time. Let us worship, leaning on prayer and reflection and sharing with one another. My one and only, so many songs have utilized this phrase to express devoted love. This week, we see that this tradition goes back all the way to the poets of the psalm tradition. This is a love psalm of trust in the Holy One and Only, who is the rock and refuge in the midst of life that sometimes feels as fleeting as breath. We put our trust in the one who indeed is holding our lives. Turn now your gaze upon the earth. Where is the one who never sleeps? safe in holy keep. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God God of our devotion, you are the one constant in life. Open us this day to see the things that hold us in their grip so that we might shed unnecessary distractions that keep us from seeing your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for being our rock, holding our lives together in the ways that matter most. Amen.
This worship series, God is Holding Your Life, features passages from the Psalms each week. We're reading from a brand new translation based on work by the Order of St. Luke. This Psalter is intended to provide a resource for reading the Psalms in private or corporate prayer. The translation was designed to specifically bring out the beauty of the language to reveal the deeper meaning of the Psalms. By the way, that illustration that you can see on the cover comes from the Book of Kells. That's a beautifully illustrated manuscript that goes back about 1,200 years. That figure looks a little bit like a winged goat or something. It's nothing like a Mark Chagall goat. And I have no idea what it's supposed to mean. Anyhow, Psalm 62 is classified primarily as a song of confidence. And the theme points out that there are right and wrong objects of faith. If we trust in God, we're secure. But if we trust in worldly things, we're pinning our faith to something so insubstantial that it's lighter than a breath of air. We can confidently place our trust in God alone. This is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. In God alone my soul finds rest, for my deliverance comes from God, who alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress. I will never be shaken. Only in God, my deliverance, my glory, my refuge is God. Trust in God always, my people. Pour out your hearts before God our refuge. Humankind is but a breath. Mortals are just an illusion. Put them on the scales and the balance is thrown off. They weigh less than a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put false hope in stolen goods. Do not set your heart on riches, even when they increase. For God has said only one thing, and twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God, steadfast love is yours. Adonai, you repay all people according to their deeds." 
Good morning, this is Pastor Mary Lee, and I'm preaching from Napa Methodist Church. The author of Psalm 62 testified, For God alone, my soul waits in silence. And it's implied that because of this, they could say, I will never be shaken. January 2021 has gotten off to a pretty shaky start. Earlier this month, there was a coup and insurrectionists stormed the Capitol, some of them carrying signs that said, Jesus saves and in God we trust and guns and God. In response to our increased national shakiness, concerns about more mayhem and threats of violence, National Guard troops were deployed to provide at least a sense of security. I wonder if the people who carried those signs through the Capitol have read the Bible or are familiar with the words of Psalm 62. Humankind is but a breath. Mortals are just an illusion. Put them on the scales and the balance is off. They weigh less than a breath. Do not trust in, on it in exhortion. Do not set your hearts on riches even when they increase. For God has said one thing only, twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. The psalmist reminds us that no leader, no political party, no position of power can save us or shelter us from fear and insecurity. God alone has that power. God alone can provide us with peace and security. The psalmist equated God's power with love. Power belongs to you and steadfast love belongs to you, Adonai. After the coup, Sojourner's Magazine printed this opinion. The image of Jesus and a lot of white evangelical conservative Christianity has been conformed to the image of the former president himself, full of violence, power, hoarding, name-calling, and violent, taking what you, violently taking what you want. This reflection is not a diatribe against him, but it's a contrast between the very human tendency to bow before and attach ourselves to those in power with today's psalm and the biblical understanding of God and God's love as the only certain source of power. St. Augustine, a fourth century bishop of the church, who before his conversion to Christianity was known for his excessive lifestyle, came to realize this. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Over time, we have come to understand trusting God in different ways than the psalmist or early Christians might have. Most of us don't see ourselves at the mercy of God's whims, if you will, or believe that everything that happens is caused by God. That doesn't negate the lesson of the Psalms of, of this Psalm or, or the confidence of the psalmist who wrote, for God alone, my soul waits in silence. I will never be shaken. Quietness of the soul and inner stillness come with giving up our anxieties and insecurities to God in an act of trust. And I don't think an act of trust is the same thing as an act of will. Being still and holding peace inside and radiating it outward and listening with the ears of the heart to the quiet voice of God, those are spiritual practices. Trappist, monk, Mystic and social activist Thomas Merton wrote, not all of us are called to be hermits, but all of us need enough silence and solitude in our lives to enable the deeper voice of our self to be heard occasionally. And he believed in a world of noise, confusion and conflict, it is necessary that there be places of silence, inner discipline and peace. In such places, love can blossom. There's an interfaith meditation group here at church that meets, now virtually, in spirit and intent, every Monday at 5.30 to practice silence and quietness of the soul. These are lifelong practices, being still and listening for God in silence, that someday could, could uh, lead us to concur with the psalmist, I will never be shaken, only in God, my refuge is God. So there are a couple of spiritual practices 
this psalm invites us to consider. One is inner stillness and peace, and the other is an outward expression of confidence in God. Trust in God always, my people, encourages this psalm. Pour out your hearts before God, our refuge. To pour out our hearts before God, we need to have faith, or at least have an awareness of the longing we have for faith, that we're known by God, that we are worthy of God's love and grace. Then we can pour our hearts out to God, but only if we trust that God is listening, that God cares, and that God is holding our lives. The spiritual practice of expressing confidence in God is also called witnessing or testifying. In a legal sense, these practices are less intimidating to many people of faith than in a religious sense. The psalmist was not shy about testifying to their experience with God. For my deliverance comes from God who alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress, only in God, my deliverance, my glory, my refuge. My question to those of us who hesitate to share our faith, to testify, lest we be lumped together with Bible thumpers and televangelists and snake oil salesmen is this. How others, people with curiosity and sensitivity and spiritual seekers, how will they know what faith and confidence in God looks like and sounds like if their exposure is only to the above mentioned types or to angry gun-toting rioters carrying signs that belie their beef belief that in God we trust. I wonder if you could write your own psalm. Psalm 62 could be a, a template to express, as the psalmist did, what you know about God. Godly play, which is a children's curriculum, uses the words, I wonder, when telling Bible stories. Stories of our faith that can, that can confound us or seem hopelessly archaic or can make them make us question what we know about God. What if in writing a psalm, and don't get hung up on the word psalm, psalms are poetry, prose, songs, and prayers. What if you read each line and then say to yourself, and maybe to God, I wonder if this is true for me, or I wonder if this is my experience, or I wonder if other people believe this, or I wonder if there's an aspect of my spiritual life that needs to grow here, or I wonder why the author of this psalm felt like this, or I wonder if I write my own psalm, if anyone will want to hear it, or I wonder what else might be revealed to you. Throughout this worship series, we've shown pictures of cupped hands as an image of God holding our lives. Each pair of hands is unique and different, just, of, just as each of us have unique and different experiences of God. Every week in God is Holding Your Life, we're inviting someone to share their testimony, their experience of being held by God. This morning, I'd like to welcome and thank God for David Tokar for sharing his testimony with us. There are some words and images to take with us as we go into this new week. May they inspire you to write a psalm or to think about what your soul needs. Here they are. Silence. Solitude. Wait. Trust. Shaken. Power. Refuge. Love. In all of them, or any of them, may you see and hear signs of God's love for you, and may you know that God is holding your life. Amen. Hi, I'm David Tokar, a lay speaker here at Napa Methodist Church. Life is challenging. <laughs> for me, right now especially, the information age makes it so easy to get news, but it's almost always bad news. Voltaire wrote that we must cultivate our gardens, and we pray each day to make it on earth as it is in heaven, but it feels like no matter how much work we, I can put in, there's nothing that I can do personally to change world events, and it, so it's difficult to watch them happen. It feels like everything is one step forward, two steps back.
And of course, seeing and feeling like my hard work does nothing in the world is disheartening. It, <laughs> it, it, it triggers my own anxieties of life and my thoughts spiral out of control sometimes and it can all be so overwhelming. The Psalms this week, Psalm 62, talks about God as a rock, a, a haven, an anchor point. This brings comfort to me. I know that I can trust in God when things are tough. I can lean on him and he can carry me through just about anything. God is completely unconquerable and cannot be overcome. With him, I become unconquerable. It goes on to say that Everything that brings us down is less than a breath. It uses one of my favorite Hebrew words, Havel, which means a vanity or a puff of air. It's used often to mean something that is pointless, meaningless in the long run when you compare it to God. And so I'm reminded in this psalm that God's kingdom is coming and all the troubles of this earth are temporary. And all the hard work that I put in, that we all put in, will mean something someday. So this week, go out and remember that you can trust in God to carry you through and that one day we will all be in God's kingdom together. Amen. My life flows on in endless song Above a lamentation I catch the sweet though far of him that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to the rock I'm clinging Since love is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble in their fear And hear their death now ringing when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm while to the rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? In prison cell and dungeon vile, our thoughts to them are winging. When friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? for a moment of silence as we begin to pray. I invite you to cup your hands ready to receive God's love and peace and to prepare to be God's love and peace in the world. We give thanks for the gift of another day in your presence. God of all time, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the companions who accompany us on life's journey. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for the new beginning for the, our nation and new ways to bridge the differences that divide us. God of Shalom, Hear our prayer. We pray for alleviation of suffering caused by the pandemic. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. We pray for the health of the planet Earth. 
God of creation, hear our prayer. We pray for those who need rest and for those who are longing to find refuge in God. Shelter in God, hear our prayer. Holy and living one, for those we name and the ones whose names we do not know, hear our prayer. Now extend your cupped hands outward towards others and then over your heart as a sign that you send your heartfelt love and peace out to the world and joining in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. everyone, this is the invitation to the offering of our tithes, lives, and love. One of my favorite theologians, James Cohn, talks about the importance of our faith being a faith of history. Our foundational stories, for the most part, talk about God interacting with us in the midst of human history. He basically says that if we are faithful, it's probably because we have recognized all that God has done to win our trust. In our faith, we are not asked to trust blindly or to believe blindly. Instead, we reflect on where we discern God's presence. That is part of the reason why it is so important for us to share stories of our spiritual journey. By sharing stories, we can open each other's eyes to new possibilities of who God is and where God can be found. That is why in addition to inviting you to offer a tithe, we invite you to participate in our upcoming Lenten devotional. We are looking for people willing to share their insights into a particular topic that our devotional coordinate, uh, coordinator will assign. I want to reassure you that you don't have to be a theological genius to contribute to this project. Simply being honest on where you are with God is powerful enough. If you are willing and able to participate, please contact Holly's Coney. But if you do not have her contact information, you can call or email our main office instead. And of course, to send a financial offering, you can mail it to this address. Or you can visit our website to give online.
Thank you for joining us for worship. So it's Michael here to bring weekly worship video number 46 to a close and to thank you for choosing to spend this time with us today. This virtual community that stretches out from the Napa Methodist Church encompasses a great many individuals and households, both near to and far from the church's historic location in downtown Napa. This congregation will proudly mark its 169th anniversary later this year. We're happy to see new young faces among our extended congregation, as, as well as the old ones like mine. And remember, if you like what you see and hear here, invite your friends and family to join in because there's always room at this table. It's a place to gain strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. There's been a lot of turbulence in the world in the last few weeks. I, and I don't think we're done yet. The underlying theme during this season of Epiphany is God holding your life. Our psalm focus today was in God alone. So, in God alone what? 
Well, in God alone, we can confidently place our trust. Material riches, the promises of humanity, are inconsequential, like a breath of air. And God is our rock and refuge. There's something else that you can put your trust in, and that's Michael's mantra. COVID vaccination is underway, but it will take time. And until a significant number of people are vaccinated, there will not be a return to what we remember as normal. So Michael's mantra is simple, inexpensive, and effective. Wash your hands, keep your distance, be patient, and mask up in public. And especially now, I think I would emphasize to be patient. God is holding our life, and we in turn hold on to one another. We give thanks for strong yet tender hands held out in trust and blessing. Where words fall short, let hands speak out, the heights of love expressing. So hear these words of benediction. Go now in the knowledge that God is holding your life even as we hold each other. You are not alone. You are loved. So go now in peace and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. But, but, don't rush off. I may get to speak the last word, but Jimbo gets to play the last note. So let's listen. <laughs>